lite grann. Ta Rambo den... Lunch. Ja. Du tyckte om päron. Mm. I have candy between my teeth. Three, two, one. Hi everyone, today we're at one of our London offices. We're gonna check in with the team, wrap up the year and see what they've been cooking. Let's go. Hey my man, how's it going? Hey, hey. I heard you got something. Do you wanna see? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, let's go. Ear open is here. Straight from the factory line, eh? Straight from the factory, fresh. And uh, finally put my DVTs away. <laughs> I'm quite impressed by the sound there. Yeah, everyone I've shown has been really surprised because they believe if it's open, then the sound will leak and there's no bass, but I don't know how we did it. The sound starts with the driver. Not only a custom diaphragm, we've got a patent pending custom diaphragm. It's this amazing, completely new shape. So the team have taken like this traditional toroidal shape. They've taken the torus and pulled it in. They've adjusted the corrugation pattern. So the thick ends are at the sides rather than in the middle. All of that means the KMS curve matches the BL curve. So you get super low distortion and great bass. In English? In English. <laughs> and one key thing is like you were mentioning about this, the, the leakage, right? Like how do you manage to get that quality? We knew sound leakage was a concern. And so what we've done is we've implemented this kind of dual speaker system. So there's a speaker obviously driving sound into your ears. And then there's a secondary outward facing speaker system. That one plays an inverse sound form. The normal sound goes into your ears and then an inverse sound form goes outside. When the two meet, they cancel out. So two types of sound is leaking from your ear. Yeah. The actual leak and the, the sound to kind of negate that leak. Right, the engineers are just badass. Not only do we have a patent pending custom diaphragm, they've coated it in titanium. Diaphragms are best when they're infinitely rigid and infinitely thin. Titanium is strong and it's light, and this rigidity means there's no distortion and there's no bending. So strong and stiff means great high frequency response. Carl, you were pushing for this category for the longest period of time. A lot of people were skeptical internally, but I was really bullish on this form factor because you see people wearing regular earbuds these days, and sometimes they only wear earbuds with one bud in the ear and the, another one out because they want to hear what's you know, happening all around them. But this form factor opens up so that you can hear all your surroundings without having to do that. And I think there's a lot of cool stuff that we can build on top of an experience like this. I feel that too, right? I put these on, I don't feel them, they're weightless. I'm listening to the soundtrack that I want, my music, my entertainment, and at the same time I have complete access to the world around me. I don't feel like disconnected. Sometimes so much so that you forget that you're wearing anything. <laughs> like today I was wearing this the entire day, and I was just thinking, wait a minute, am I still wearing anything? <laughs> yeah, I've seen you around the office. Yeah, forgot about it. It's kind of sense of audio companion, you know, yeah. especially when you have like active lifestyles, like, you know, you go running, you have calls, you go around. And I think for me, that's where it's become a game changer. You know, it's not like you put your audio and then that's it, you're tuned out. You can just keep those on and just carry on with your life, do different things with it. It's just a, an effortless experience, right? In terms of comfort. We recruited a cohort of testers from around the world. So they can sit and stand, run, jump, cycle. Uh, everything that they would normally do while wearing these. Over 40 iterations, constantly refining, making it feel great. Earbuds, you know, we all wear them in different ways. Some people have the stem going like this, like <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, But sure. this one, everyone I see around, like it just sits the exact same way. We designed it around this tri-point design ethos. The earpiece sits at the apex of the ear, then the driver sits right here, right over the ear canal. It's nestled perfectly between what's called the helix and the tragus. And then the battery sits behind your earlobe. There's nothing you have to do to think about it. You put it on and it just fits there. You know what I'm really surprised by? We've had many people wearing these, but it hasn't been leaked. <laughs> it's pretty lucky, right? Touch <laughs> <laughs> the team has worked quite a lot on this being one of the lightest. It's right? one of the lightest buds on the market. Inside the ear hook is a nickel titanium alloy. It's strong and light super resilient and flexible. It's not just about listening, it's also about engaging, talking to people. We've got an AI-enhanced clear voice technology. It's been trained on 28 million scenarios. We went to some of the most noisy places in the earth. We recorded all the ambient sounds, isolated honking, dogs barking, wind blowing. Then the onboard systems in your earbuds, they listen for that noise. When it hears it, it cuts it out. People saying, oh, I cannot hear you well and so on, but with this, it has never happened. No. I don't know what the team has been cooking, but uh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely nailed it. Eight hours of playback on a bud, 30 hours of playback with the case, low lag mode down to 120 milliseconds for gaming, automatic bass enhanced system, 
nothing you need to do. Play your music when it spots that the bass sounds are coming up. It enhances them so it sounds even better. The case. The case. Case. So, I don't think the designers <laughs> intended this, but I cannot keep my hands off this thing. It's mm. just so much fun. It's only 19 millimeters thin. Yeah, I was surprised by how thin it was. Yeah, we think it's the thinnest on the market. Really? Yeah, absolutely. What it means is it fits into pockets and packs everywhere. Maybe we can just do the price. Ear Open will be available at $149, 149 euros, and 129 pounds. It will be available for pre-order starting today on nothing.tech. Then we'll have some limited drops on the 28th of September, including our London Soho store. And then it will gradually go on open sales all throughout October. All right, here we go. I'm really excited to dig in. Man, OS3 is uh, pretty much the OS we always wanted to make. It took three years, but it's finally here. I've seen a lot of people online really anticipating this. We have the dot animations now. With Nothing OS3, uh, we doubled down on all the high frequency elements throughout the OS. So things like the lock screen, the quick settings, the home screen. We tried to redesign everything for better UX, looks, and just so it feels a lot smoother. Yeah, I teased this uh, screen on Twitter. People liked it. Nothing as one and two, we started to establish our own design language. With Nothing as three, we kind of taken it to the next level. Mm -hmm. We refined the topography and adapted it for better readability and refined it throughout the whole UI across the OS and the apps. Before, like, we had the NDOT font everywhere. It's not that we don't love NDOT. I think NDOT is great, but you can't just have it everywhere. We really want to be very tasteful with how we use the NDOT. Combined with the updated sans serif font, just gives this kind of a modern and more clean look throughout the OS. The dot matrix is such a kind of iconic element of our design system. We still wanted to keep it in the OS. So that's why we developed this animation engine, which powers the dot animation throughout the OS in fingerprint animation or like when you charge the phone using this element in the apps as well. So for example, like the weather app where we can display the weather icons in this very cool dot matrix style and we can actually animate them. I think this is much better than just having all the dots in the same size. It's a lot more dynamic and I think this opens up a lot of room for us to do cool stuff. Are we thinking about anything uh, else for the future? We have this transparency in the hardware, which we use a lot. And we thought about transparency in the software, how we can create a similar idea in the UI. And we think visualizing the data and making the data visible is one of those things which feels like transparency in software. I see the lock screen is completely redesigned. New lock screen got a complete revamp. Now you can edit things in a very direct way, right? Just long press, go into the edit mode and you can choose different clock faces or just the widget area. Starting from the clock faces, these include some of our very recognizable and iconic designs like the N-type mm -hmm. and N-dot. But also we came up with a few new ones and we actually had a lot of fun designing those. Yeah, yeah I like this one. I, I was so excited when I saw the mock-ups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I uh, tweeted them. I like this one too. It's like, it's an unusual design which comes from the limitation, right? Because we're trying to fit this analog clock face into like very limited area at the top. This clock face inspired by the London Underground. And this is a typeface which some of the older stations in the London Underground still use. And we kind of took this as a reference and also kind of a nice homage to where our headquarters is located. Okay, so more customization. Yeah, so the clock face is one part and you can really play around with it to make it look your own. But if you want something more functional, you can just tap on the widget area, click expand and really build your own custom layout, which kind of just fits your needs perfectly. And then you can just drag and drop different elements to build your own home screen. One of the other areas people were talking about a lot is the quick settings. And that's also what we wanted to redesign completely. From the beginning, we actually always wanted to make it modular. And we just played around with different styles and the layouts. We finally landed on this one, which feels in line with the OS. And it's actually built around the same grid system as the home screen and the rest of the launcher. The previous quick settings was one of my least favorite parts of Nothing OS. I think the biggest improvement is not only does it look nice, but for me, it's like the information density. I also didn't like that we had like two big tiles before and it was kind of hard to understand what to do. Now it's just way more intuitive. Yeah. and. 
Actually, you can make it as dense or like as bold as you want, right? If you want to have a lot of small elements on the first swipe, you can just kind of minimize everything. If you want to have more larger elements, just like expand everything. Another point people mentioned quite a lot was the auto brightness toggle. We built it right into this brightness slider bar. I always wondered why we didn't have that, but now we do. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is kind of a nice solution to it. So ever since the beginning, we tried to create a system that's more helpful to people. What else are we doing in 3.0? AI is definitely one of the things we're trying to use more throughout the OS. And this is actually where the smart drawer comes in. When you have so many apps and you have to scroll through this like huge canvas of app icons, it can be really hard to find the app that you want. One of the new things actually that we added to the standard drawer is the ability to pin things to the top. So if you want some app to be always visible for you on the first swipe, you can just pin it to the top like this. Mm. If you want to get really organized, you can just switch to the smart drawer and instantly have all your apps sorted into different categories. So we're actually using AI here to kind of analyze of your usage of different apps and surface the right apps for you in the right moment when you need them the most. It feels really convenient. Speaking about efficiency, we create these widgets that allow people to spend less time in the apps and more time getting things done on the home screen and lock screens. And I think it's been really well received. Like people really like the widgets. So what are we doing differently for 3.0? The widgets are one of the defining features of our OS. It's the way how you can access information without getting distracted by the rest of the content. So we're constantly expanding our library of widgets and so far we already released over 20. And with Nothing OS 3, we're bringing the new one. It's a countdown widget. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to track time towards the, some specific date that you're looking forward to or just kind of like display some general things like a year progress or maybe your next birthday. What would you put as a countdown? The open beta <laughs> release. Okay, yeah. it's coming soon. Remember in the past when social media just came out. But over time we just started following more and more randoms. We're trying to think about this concept of tacit social, like human connection in general is more than just texting each other, right? Like, wouldn't it be nice for you to be able to have this sense of connection with somebody else without needing to always text something? The social aspect of the OS is quite important to us. So that's why we came up with this idea of shared widgets. You can take some of the widgets on your home screen and just share it with somebody. Maybe that's your close friend or somebody from, from your family. This sort of creates this kind of portal between two phones. What I see, it also becomes what you see. I can share photos or you can kind of see and pick into my day how I am doing with the step counter or maybe screen time. Also competition, right? If we like have each other, it's widgets and we do the pedometer one, Yeah, we can race every day. Yeah, you can compare who walked uh, the most each day. And to add a little fun, we actually also included this interaction element. So you can drop in the reactions or stickers and another person on the other end will see it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this. I have a lot of friends and family all over the world and I don't know what to text, so <laughs> <laughs> this will make us feel more connected. Maybe we should um, talk about apps. It's finally coming, it's uh, nothing gallery. The thing with Nothing Gallery, we want to really optimize it to work really well across camera and the whole OS. Mm -hmm. So in combination with the camera, it really brings a lot of speed improvements. We got a lot of feedback that um, after you take a photo and then going into the gallery, it took yeah, a long time. Because this kind of transition has to happen between our camera and the Google Photos app. So the transition now is up to 1.4 seconds faster. The processing times for some of the complex cases like HDR and the portrait effects, they can be up to 25% faster. So talking about the layout, we also designed this to be in style with the rest of the OS with Nothing OS 3. It kind of starts with this simple grid, but you also have this easily identifiable key moments throughout your feed. So you can easily find it when you scroll through your photos library. But if I travel to Italy and have a great pasta, will it favor it? Yeah. So we can identify it as a key moment. And we also use this AI image segmentation to kind of highlight the key object and segment it out of the rest of the image so you can find it easily. In the future, we're gonna be adding more automatic AI image categorization and the more natural language search and a lot more AI features are actually also coming in the future. The AI upscaling and super resolution, when you zoom in the, into the image, like we can really bring those details up. Also the AI image generation, so you can just turn yourself into a crazy samurai or something. Very cool. 
looking forward and I think our community is going to be really excited about this release. So the general release will begin in December and the open beta will start rolling out in October. All right, great stuff. Thank yeah. you. All right, Thanks, guys. So sorry, just to cut you off, but uh, the, we've got to do battery change. Anything you want to add? No, uh, I think we're no. good.